Hey friends, welcome back to Midweek Encouragement. Hey, for the last several years, my doctor was telling me, you need to lose some weight. And I'm being about as successful at losing weight as he is in growing hair. Maybe I'm doing a little bit better than he is. <laughs> but but he's right. I do need to lose some weight. And I work at it. I work out. I try to eat right. I, I try to do everything right. I try to take this seriously. And the journey up the mountain has been a lot more fun than the journey down the mountain. Uh, the biggest issue for me is I like to eat. I like food. Uh, uh, what I know I need to do is to think further ahead. I'm not talking a week down the road or two weeks down the road, but I just need to think about before I eat or even for the day, what should I eat? How much will I eat? How fast will I eat? I need to predetermine that. I need to start making the decision I uh, need to make ahead of time. If a friend says, hey, Kevin, you want to do lunch? And we go someplace, I need to decide before I get there, what should I eat? How fast should I eat? what's important for me to have. I have to decide in my heart what's good for my heart. I'm going to take that scripture, guard your heart, to a different level. Not just with food do I need to decide in my heart what to eat. I also have to decide what physical activity or exercise I will do, what entertainment I will choose, what books I will read, uh, pe what people will I spend time with, and what places will I go to. When I decide in my heart in advance, I am protecting my spiritual and physical heart for the long term. I have set the uh, compass of my heart and I check it often to make sure I'm on course. And if I st start to drift, I turn the wheel to correct a little bit. I think it'd be interesting if I could develop something that would be like an ink pen going across a piece of paper that when I drive, it's connected to my steering wheel, so that when I drive, I see how much I'm correcting my, my steering as I go. I have a little pen and the paper rolls, kind of like a seismograph, and it's, it's marking how much and how fast and how often I turn the wheel back and forth. Because in driving, you are constantly correcting, uh, make, constantly making a course correction. And if I were to lock the wheel and just go, eventually I would either end up in a ditch or I would end up uh, running into somebody that we really didn't want to meet that way. <laughs> when I have a decided heart, I know the goal of where I want to end up. I have set my course. And when I find myself on course, I make an adjustment. When my wife and I go for staff meeting on Saturday mornings, one of us will say, where do you want to go today? And the other one gives the standard response of, I don't care, which uh, that's over an hour away from us. There's a restaurant called I Don't Care about an hour from us, and I don't think they serve breakfast. But we want to know where we're going. We want somebody to decide for us. We want the decision made. Uh, when our heart is decided, we know where we are going and we know why we are going there. If we forget our why, we will lose our way. Our enemy, Satan, wants to distract us. He wants us to lose our way. And the good news is, Jesus will forgive us if we lose our way. He just wants us to recalculate and come back. Satan tries to make enough noise and distraction to cause us to not hear his call to recalculate. When I miss my turn, my GPS will say, recalculating. Got a unique voice for it, but recalculating. Uh, give me a new direction. Now, I am very thankful that my GPS unit after I miss one or two turns, doesn't say, oh, I'm out of here. I, I, I tap out. You're, you're lost and you're going to stay that way. You won't listen. It doesn't give up. It just keeps recalculating. And isn't that the way our Savior Jesus Christ is? He doesn't give up on us. He gives opportunities for us to turn and follow him. That's his love for us. And there is nothing that can separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. He loves to lavish his love upon his children. Uh, think for a moment or, or pause here. Hit the pause button and think for a moment. Where have you seen him lavish his love upon you lately? Where? Are you breathing? He's lavishing his love on you because he's the one that created the oxygen you can't even see. But isn't he lavishing his love upon you? I think uh, one way we might, uh, one of the ways we might overlook the love that the Father is lavishing on us are the places and the opportunities he puts in front of us to love someone else. Because when we love someone else, 
we're wearing his shoes. We're being him. We represent him. And remember, we only get one chance to make a first impression. So what kind of impression are you making on those people that you go and you love on a little bit? When we have a decided heart, we have made a decision that no matter what, we're going to allow the love of God to flow through us, not over us or around us. It's going to go through us. With a decided heart, we know the boundaries. And when the enemy's uh, distractions and temptations come our way, uh, they are ineffective because we have a decided heart. We know what is right. We know what is wrong. Uh, as the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation has uh, overtaken you except for what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. When I have a decided heart, I don't wait until temptation day to draw the line of what I shouldn't do. I drew the line long ago, and I know that the only direction that that line moves is further towards the truth and farther away from the lie. Charisma will take you so far, and integrity will take you your lifetime. If you walk into the church and there was nobody around, and you saw a quarter on the ground, would you pick it up and put it in the generosity plate or your pocket? What if it was a $1 bill? Would you put it in the offering plate or your pocket? If you walk into the church and you saw a $5 bill on the floor of the church and no one was around, would you pick it up and put it in the generosity plate or your pocket? What about a 10 a 20 a $100 bill? You see, when we have a decided heart, it doesn't matter the amount because we've already made the decision. We're going to choose what is right, no matter how difficult situations are around us. An undecided heart is going to make you give up and quit very easily. The book of James gives us these instructions in James chapter 1. Consider it a pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you are faced with many trials, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like the waves of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. The person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all that they do. Are you sure and anchored or are you tossed around? Decided hearts are well anchored and secure. And a decided heart goes around telling everybody their woes and complains about everything. I used to say, sooner or later, you've got to stop telling God how big your mountain is and start telling your mountain how big God is. But I've changed that because I've really believed sooner or later, we have to stop telling God and everyone else how big our mountain is and start telling the mountain and everyone else how big God is. And if God says, pick up a shovel, we pick up a shovel, we say, yes, sir. And we don't ask when to quit. We keep doing it until the path is cleared. Ecclesiastes 11.4 from the Living Bible says, if you wait for perfect conditions, you'll never do anything. And Hebrews uh, 6.19 says, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters in the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner Jesus has entered on our behalf. This anchor has gone into the Holy of Holies. He's created the pathway. He split the curtain so we can go into the presence of God and ask anything that we need. And the Father sitting on his throne says, come here, my child. I love you. You're precious to me. I chose you since the creation of the world. And he invites us to sit in the throne room with him. And we have his full attention. Does he have ours? A decided heart is only concerned with the father's opinion of them and no one else's. I had a friend that used to say all the time, it doesn't matter what people call you. It only matters what you answer to. And I think he's right, but let's take it a step further and keep in mind, it's not what we answer to, but who we will answer to one day.
A decided heart proclaims, I know whom I have believed in, and I am convinced that he is able to guard that which I have entrusted to him until that day. Because a decided heart can do this, and all because they made the most important decision of the person that they are going to start the day with and live the day for, because they made an appointment with God the Father. It is in his presence that we decide, believe, and obey. Would you be willing to go into your prayer room, lock the door, and ask the Father what he wants you to decide, decide on in advance so, so that when, you face, when you're faced with a decision of two paths, you're always going to choose the right one because it's the right thing to do. Hey, Pastor Kevin, and I look forward to seeing you again. Bye-bye.